In the last section, we talked about ways we could use events to control our solutions. In this section, we're going to look at how we can do the same with messages. A message is in binary format. It contains JSON, XML, or just text. If we think about to the events, this is the exact opposite. With events, it was metadata about the object, but not the object itself. In this case, it is the message or object. The underlying concept is very similar. By decoupling the various applications, it again gives us a lot of flexibility with how we create our solutions. Let's take a quick look at the image below. We have our sender of the message on the left. This could be one of multiple services. You are essentially calling an API in order to send the message to the service bus. Once the message reaches the service bus, it then sits in a queue. The receiver can be another service or application. To retrieve the message from the queue, we are making another API call. If there is a message in the queue available, the receiver can then view and act upon the message as needed. You may also hear that senders are referred to as producers and receivers are referred to as consumers. Same concept, just tomato, tomato. When we were discussing event grid, we were using topics to tell the event source where to send the event. With Azure Service Bus, we use the same concept except now we have two options, queues and topics. Let's discuss queues first. A queue is a single space where messages can be sent. As messages are come in, they are time stamped in the order which they are received. A receiver will then request the message from the Service Bus queue. This works great in a point-to-point -point scenario where you have one sender and one receiver. If you have multiple receivers, they will then be competing with one another. You may be asking, why not just have the sender send the message directly to the receiver? One reason or advantage to using a service bus is it allows asynchronous communication. Additionally, if the sender sends many messages in a short amount of time, the receiver may become overloaded. By using the service bus queue, it allows both sides to send and receive messages at their own pace. Topics, on the other hand, are designed for use with multiple receivers. You still only have one sender, but instead of competing with each other, each receiver will have their own queue or subscription to pull from, this allowing you to create a one-to-many relationship. As the sender sends a message, that same message is populated within each one of the subscriptions. These unique subscriptions allow the individual receivers to get messages from within there without impacting others. So as receiver one is getting information from its subscription, it's not going to impact the subscriptions for receiver two or receiver three. Once we have created our service bus queues and topics, we need to ensure that only the appropriate senders and recipients can utilize our service bus. To do this, we create shared access signatures. By creating a shared access signature, we have the ability to define who can send those messages and then who can receive them. And there are three permissions that we can assign to that shared access signature. The first is send, and this gives the ability to send messages to a topic or queue. Along the same lines, we have listen. This works the same way, except now we can receive those messages. And then finally, we have manage. This gives both send and listen permissions, but also gives the ability to manage the namespace. When you create a service bus namespace, it automatically creates the root shared access signature, much like we saw in event hubs. This provides managed access to the service bus, including any topics or queues created within it. And again, like event hub, you can create your own shared access signature and associate it at the namespace, topic, or queue with the desired permissions. Once again, Azure has a few different tiers we can choose from to help us make sure we're only paying for the features that we need. If we start with the basic tier, it allows us to only use queues. With this tier, we're not able to create a topic. It is also a consumption model, so we're only paying for the number of operations we use. If we move up to the standard tier, we now have the option to use both queues and topics. Additionally, we now move to a base hourly price. The base price covers the first 13 million operations per month. If we go above that, then we have a tiered pricing model. And then with the premium tier, we still get topics and queues, but in addition, we now also can run in an isolated instance. This can help if you experience some inconsistencies on the standard tiers because of the shared model. Additionally, we also get a higher message size limit, and we can use availability zones, which help with geo disaster recovery. Let's jump in the portal and let's see service bus in action. So here we are in the Azure portal. What we're looking to do is get a service bus created and then look at some of the options within it. So to start, let's create a service bus. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this and you can see we don't have one today. So let's go ahead and create the namespace. So we're gonna put this in the Skylines resource group. We're gonna give it a name of Skyline service bus. We'll leave that in the default East US region. And then we're gonna go ahead and select the standard tier so we can have the option for both queues and topics. 
We're not going to define any tags at the moment, and let's go ahead and create this. All right, it looks like our service bus is created, so let's go ahead and check it out. Once we're in here, well, let's go take a look at these shared access policies. And you can see by default, we've got our default root manage shared access key, which has the manage, send, and listen. If we want to go ahead and add one, we have that option, and then we can again select our options, much in the same way that we did with Event Hub. We're going to go ahead and cancel out of this for the time being. And let's go take a look overview. And then we've got our option for creating queues and topics up top. Additionally, if we scroll down to the left, we have our queues and topics here. And you can see right now we don't have a queue. So let's go ahead and create our first one. And we're just going to call this Skylines Queue. And we'll go ahead and you can see we've got a number of options here as far as the maximum count we can have at a given time or at a given batch, message TTL, so on and so forth. We're just going to leave these at the default and go ahead and create. All right, and that queue's been created, so let's go ahead and open it up. If we go to Service Bus Explorer on the left, you see we have the option here to where we can basically send and receive. So let's go ahead and we're just going to send a plain text message, and we're just going to call this test message. And you can see we have a few other options here, but let's just go ahead and hit send. And now if we go up to peak, you can see we do have one active message. Let's go ahead and take a look, and you can see we've got a message sequence of one, and if we go through and look at that, we can see the test message is there. So that's essentially how the queue works. We have the option to be able to send and as well as receive here. And if we do a receive here, we can see basically that message is received. Now if we go back to peak and look, there's no message there because again, we received that one message, so there's not any active messages in here. So peak essentially is a non-destructive way to review the messages. So now that we've looked at a queue, let's go back to our service bus, and let's take a look at topics. And again, we have the option to create a topic because we selected the standard tier. We'll go ahead, and we're just gonna call this one Skylines Topic, and we're gonna go ahead and create that. And I clicked it twice, so we got an error message. Uh, that's okay. Let's go ahead then and open that topic, and we're going to create a subscription within it. And we're just going to call this sub one. We're going to give it max delivery count of 10. And then let's go ahead and leave the rest of the defaults and create. What we're going to do a little different this time is we're going to create a shared access policy here. So we're just going to go ahead and add. We're just going to call this sample. SAS, and we're going to give it full permissions and create. So since we're creating a unique shared access policy here, let's go ahead and open this up. And you can see not only do we get the primary and secondary key, but we also get a connection string. So let's go ahead and grab that connection string. And this time, instead of sending the messages through the UI, I've got some code in Visual Studio set up, and I'm going to paste that connection string in here. If we look at this, it's basically going to go through and send 10 messages to that topic. You can see we've got the number of messages defined here. We're defining the connection string and the topic name here. Then if we scroll down, you can see we've got the message body. So we're defining here Skyline sample, message, and then it's going to iterate through. So let's go ahead and run this. And you can see there it has sent our 10 messages. So let's go take a look back in the portal. If we go to peak, and then we're going to select our subscription, so sub 1, and do a peak, now you can see the 10 messages. So let's go ahead and peek at those messages. And we're just going to go ahead and select the first one here. And you can see we've got skyline sample message 0, because it was the first message. And then we'll go back up, message four, so on and so forth. And rather than starting at one, we started at zero. And then we scroll down to message 10. Here we can see that it is actually message, showing as message nine. Hopefully that sheds a little more light on Service Bus, how we would create a topic, as well as a queue, how we create subscriptions within topics, as well as how we create a shared access policy.
Let's jump back in the PowerPoints and take a look at one other tool we have within Azure to work with messages.